Okay, turn over. Mark it. Scene three, take one. Stand by, Tim. And action. <laughs> and cut. That was great, Tim. Right. Let's swap the stunt dummy over for Jim. Jim. <laughs> Those contact lenses are uncomfortable. Oh. Well, take them out. Let me have a look. put women's boxing firmly on the map so hopefully now it will be taken more seriously and tell me what first attracted you to boxing was it the skipping <laughs> sorry do you like using a skipping rope well i don't like or dislike it it's just an essential part of my training and when you are using a skipping rope do you like to sing those little songs <laughs> what songs my mother said i never should talk to strangers in the wood no of course i don't sing those songs look can we just talk about the fight yeah sure your opponent was looking very good in the early round yeah she did have me uh, quite concerned in thirds after she knocked me down were you tempted at that point to just take your gloves off and start pulling her hair <laughs> Beg your pardon? You know, start scratching her eyes. What are you talking about? I'll tell you what, you look completely unstoppable in the fourth round. Yeah, yeah, I think that probably was my uh, best round. I did come out very fired up after the knockdown. Yeah, yeah. You, you seem like a woman possessed. I was very fueled with aggression, yeah. I yeah. hope you don't mind me asking, but is it time of the month? <laughs> <laughs> time of the month? Yeah, you just had that look in your eyes, like, you know, when my wife's rolling out the red carpet. Look, me. <laughs> Is there a lot of pressure being a female boxer? Well, yeah. You know, getting things like shorts that match your boots. <laughs> You're trying to wrap me up! I'm not, honestly, I'm just wondering what it's like to be a female boxer. It's exactly the same as being a male boxer. We train the same, we punch the same. Not as hard, though, eh? I could knock you out. I don't think so, do you, sweetheart? What? You want to find out? Go on, hmm? then, love. Do your best. <laughs> Are you sure it's not time of the month? <laughs> and welcome to the sixth annual Mathematicians Convention. And what better way to start the seminar than with a joke? Okay, scene six and action. We're looking for the baby Jesus. Okay, let's stop you there, Emily. It's not right, is it? Let me ask you a question. What did you have for breakfast this morning? Cornflakes. No, no, no. What did you have for breakfast? Emily had cornflakes. I am Emily. No, you are a shepherd. You have to live the shepherd, feel the shepherd. Know the emotions of you, the shepherd. You have to know what he had for breakfast, what his mother's called, what his wife's name is, what his father does for a living. Stanislavski states, we shouldn't act, we should be. <laughs> so, I'll ask you again. What did you have for breakfast? Cocoa Pops. That's it, you've heard it. <laughs> you are the shepherd. You know the shepherd. You don't know Emily. Emily has gone. 
The shepherd is here. What are you having for your tea tonight, Mr. Shepherd? Alphabetti spaghetti. Brilliant. <laughs> Let's go again. <laughs> and the ones to watch, lane three, Strasskopf. Lane two, Fleichmann. Lane one, Tavare. <laughs> There you go. Extraction finished, sir. Shall I wrap it? Wrap what? The tooth. Why would you do that? You don't want to get blood everywhere when you're taking it home. Why would I want to take it home? The tooth fairy. The tooth fairy? I'm a 34-year-old man. Don't talk to me like a child. All right, please yourself. She that's going to lose our £1.50 from the furries. They don't exist. Shh! <laughs> don't you realise one dies every time you say that? There's no such thing as tooth fairies. Not, mate. If there's no such thing as tooth fairies, can you explain to me who it is that's rummaging through me bins at night looking for old teeth? It's probably foxes. Don't be ridiculous. Foxes have got plenty of their own teeth. <laughs> Besides, why would they go around leaving money under people's pillows? They don't. It's your parents. How dare you? I think my parents have got nothing better to do than dress up as furries and break into people's houses. They don't break into anyone's house. Well, how do they get the money under the pillow? They don't. Look, your parents put money under your pillow. My parents put money under my pillow. So you're telling me that parents are going into their children's bedrooms at night and exchanging money for their children's extracted teeth, they're not even telling them and blaming it on the furries? Exactly. Sounds a bit far-fetched to me. <laughs> anyway, what do they do with the teeth? Nothing, just chuck them in the bin. Oh, they shouldn't do that. That'll attract the foxes. No. And another thing, why would the parents actually do this? I don't know, guilt. Guilt? Yeah, if they didn't give their children so much chocolate, they wouldn't have such rotten teeth. Well, you can't blame the parents for that. Well, who can you blame? Easter Bunny. <laughs> Hello, J. Terry Window Cleaning Services. You'd like your windows cleaned? OK, I'll just check the file of facts to see what my availability is. OK, I've got a window on Tuesday, <laughs> so I can't clean your windows then. I've got a window Thursday afternoon, can't help you there. Ah, I haven't got a window on Friday, I can clean your window then. Let's make it a window. <laughs> Oh. 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 Darling? Oh. Darling? Oh. Oh. I was having another nightmare. About what? I was watching a tennis match. <laughs> <laughs> you spilled salt on the table. So? Well, it's bad luck unless you throw it over your shoulder. in the big scheme of things. The way to think about it is this. Imagine the whole universe is a beach and the planet Earth is a tiny, tiny, tiny little pebble resting on that beach and you are a tiny, tiny, tiny little grain of sand on that pebble. See? It's not important. Now what's worrying you? Hmm? I think I'm small for my age. <laughs> It's a lovely new place you've got here, Karen. Thanks. I'm really glad you came round. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh. oh what an idiot. <laughs> no, it doesn't matter. Oh. oh, it's OK. I read this great new tip in a magazine. Apparently, it's the best thing to do if you spill white wine. Pour red wine all over it. <laughs> <laughs> or is it the other way round? <laughs> Lane three, Peralski. Lane two, the big American, Turner. And for Great Britain, in lane one, Tavare. <laughs> supposed to be counting out in the fifth. No, no, 
no, you were supposed to get counted out. We agreed beforehand. We did not. We said that I almost get counted out in the fourth, and then you actually get counted out. No, we didn't, you idiot. Don't call me an idiot. Or else what? I'll smack you in the face. Idiot. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I warned you not to call me an idiot. There's no need for that, you pillock. Oh, pillock now, is it? Yeah, pillock and idiot. Right. That'll be a lesson to you. <laughs> you ready? Do you think that the opening of this building will help deaf people in the local area? Absolutely. Uh, we've been campaigning many years now for this centre to be built. <laughs> a centre specifically designed for the local deaf community. And now that it has, I really think it'll make a big difference in uh, <laughs> getting people together with similar needs. So, yeah, it really will make a massive difference. <laughs> I'm sorry, you're hitting me in the face. Could you stand a little further away, please? Sorry, I didn't realise. Don't worry, we'll edit it together later. Let's carry on, please. Do you blame the local council for taking so long to build this centre? Well, today's very much a celebration. Uh, <laughs> I find it very surprising that the political parties on the right and left have been promising us money for years, um, but it's taken the election of such a far left of centre council. <laughs> Are you doing this deliberately? What? You're hitting me with your hand. OK, OK, let's keep going, shall we? Is the taxpayer getting good value for money with this centre? Well, it's very important to remember that the local council is only <laughs> providing 50% uh, of the finance for the project. The other 50% is coming from various charities, and I'd like to thank them for that 50%. What, what's this? What is this? It's 50%. No, it's not. It's a chicken. Ah, yeah, but it's only half a chicken. That's 100%. <laughs> and that's 50%. Yeah? So what's 25%? <laughs> now, listen, we are to... pressed for time here. Can we please carry on? Can you tell us what facilities the centre will have? Yes, well, it will house an extensive library, which will provide fiction uh, from leading authors. In addition, there'll be a reference section to help local students, which should be open until half past 11 every day. And uh, we will also have computer facilities, which will give full internet access to both, um, to both adults and children. In fact, we're very, very keen on letting children use these facilities. <laughs> Up on the second floor. <laughs> up on the second floor, you're showing three. We're on the lower ground floor. It's three floors up from here. <laughs> and three floors up from here. And three floors up from here. I'm in the lift. <laughs> there will be a coffee and social lounge uh, where people <laughs> sit, <laughs> chat, and uh, uh, watch a bit of television. Do what they want, really, even show us selections from around the world. Right, that's it. I've just heard it. Will there be any restaurant facilities at the centre? Yes, there will be restaurant facilities, and in fact, on the opening night, there'll be a special offer 25% off half a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Pizza, sir. The devil are you playing at? Sorry? Is this some sort of joke? Is there something wrong with it? Of course there's something wrong with it. I said no olives. <laughs> <laughs> Look who we brought to see you, son. It's your favourite group. It's the Sugar Girls. They're going to sing for you. Your own personal performance. 
Thanks for agreeing to do this. We're just hoping if you've seen his favourite song that you might be able to bring him out of his coma. Well, we'll certainly do our best, won't we? Yeah, we just hope it helps. OK. Take it away, girls. OK. One, two. <laughs> We thought you knew. We only have a mime. <laughs> so, Orson Welles, Citizen Kane. Arguably the most important film ever made. Now, it's certain to appear in your exam tomorrow, so can anybody tell me, in a nutshell, the meaning of the film? Lee. Fundamentally, it explores the tension between the sexes in a patriarchal society, and the central character is representational of the sexism which was prevalent at the time. I'm not sure I necessarily agree with you on that. What do you mean when you say the theme of sexism was prevalent? Well, for example, in the scene when Barbara Windsor is exercising in the field and her bra falls off, <laughs> Sid James is clearly seen... I think seen... you're talking about carry-on camping. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I still think that Citizen Kane has a running theme of the patriarchal society. How? Well, the director is continually using Barakas as a means of confronting the dominant figure, which is clearly the face. Barakas is seen weakened within the male hierarchy when he states, I ain't getting on no plane, fool. <laughs> oh, no, no, that's the A-team, that's not even a film. <laughs> well, which one's Citizen Kane? Citizen Kane, as you should know by now, is the classic narrative of a man's greed consuming his moral integrity. He treats those around him as if they're animals. Indeed, he does help those unfortunate creatures, but only in a manner which suits him, in his role as private investigator on the case of a stolen dolphin. Isn't that Ace Ventura Pet Detective? Uh, possibly. <laughs> Hello, madam. And where have we just arrived from? Oh, Amsterdam. Yeah. Now, are you aware it is forbidden to bring any dairy produce in from Holland? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, what's this? Uh, it's a tub of I can't believe it's not butter. Look, please don't arrest me. I won't do anything like this again. I... It's all right, madam. This isn't butter. It's I can't believe it's not butter. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, what have we here? Oh, it's, it's nothing. I can't believe it's not heroin. <laughs> I think everything's in order there, madam. <laughs> Come in. Ah, oh, Mr Vine. Hello, Doctor. Have you brought something for me? Yes, this. Blood. 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 And what's that? It's my blood sample. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to see your new boyfriend. Oh, I've got a photo of him. Great. Hmm. Oh, yeah, very nice. But why have you drawn all over it? Mm, well, I haven't. <laughs> oh, I can't stand these conference calls. <laughs> Brother, take no bulls. You're going to give it to me straight. You've been hanging with some broad has been shooting a mouth, and me and my homie here wants a name. And if you so much as think about jiving with my butt, you're going to wind up a sorry mother with a wasted ass. Sorry? You better start <laughs> talking, homie. I didn't understand what you said. Listen, brother, we don't want to have to come down on your sorry white ass, but if you don't start barking soon, we may have to get a little bit busy with Mr. Nine Millimeter, you dick. I'm sorry, I'm really not getting any of this. I think he's having trouble understanding us. I am, yes. Well, can you hear me now? I could hear you before, I just couldn't understand what you were saying. <laughs> well, it breaks down like this. When a dude's with a cat from the hood, we're cool. You dig? But let me ask you, brother, can we be seen taking shit off a hole? I don't know anything about gardening. Just tell us what cat you've been kicking with, Mother. I haven't touched your cat. Or your mother. I don't know what you're on about. You really want some hungry from the hood to put a cap in your face? Is this something to do with a hat? <laughs> He's jamming with us. I said, let's bust his ass. Because I did find a hat the other day, but I handed it in. Look, where can we find the pussy? I haven't touched a bloody cat, I've told you. Listen, you're going to just problem. It's going to be Asta you hear what I'm saying? Start barking pronto. Great Spanish, that's really helping. You know, we can't finish this, mother. Now, we don't want to unload in your face. Oh, good. So we're going to cut a deal right now, like this. You climb up, you wind up in a body bag. If you start singing, we're out of here, it's cool and the gang. 
So you want me to sing something by Cool and the Gang? <laughs> Waste him. You better think long and hard about what you say next or else your ass is going down. So what do you say? Cherish the on the water today, but before we go, I'd like us to look at shark attacks. <laughs> now, it's very easy to get nervous about this issue, but does anybody know what the chances of being attacked by a shark actually are? <laughs> <laughs> Hands up. Bruce. <laughs> Quite high, eh? Right, it's probably the wrong person to ask. <laughs> the actual statistical answer is not very high at all. <laughs> right, what do we do when a shark attacks? Oh, wait, I know this. You're supposed to let the shark punch you on the nose and then it'll just swim off. Right, Sheila's close. Anybody else? <laughs> I know what not to do, eh? Right, thanks, Bruce. Maybe later. OK, you're supposed to punch the shark on the nose, but only if it's a hammerhead shark. Easy to remember. Hammerhead shark. Hit it like a hammer. What if it's a tiger shark? You put your head in its mouth to show you're not scared. No, Marley, that's a tiger, not a tiger shark. Ah, oh, yeah. What? You're supposed to put your head in a tiger's mouth? Yeah, but not always, though. When don't we do that? Come on, folks, this is easy. When it's wild. Ah. We only put our head in its mouth if it's in a circus. And even then, only when what? Only when you work for the circus? Good, Bazza. Not if you're a paying spectator. What are line tamers using you for audience parts as a patient? That's a good question, Marlene. In that situation, we can do it because of what? Come on, folks, we've done this. The natural social hierarchy of the performer-spectator relationship. <laughs> Which brings me on to clowns. What do we do if we're attacked by a clown? You punch the clown on the nose. No, Bazza, no. Not even if he's threatening to throw water at you. Remember, it's confetti. Do not be goaded by the clown. When can you punch the clown on the nose? Never! I cannot emphasise that enough. That red nose is a prop, not an invite for trouble. It's like the face, he's not really smiling. It's makeup, not an invitation to chat. Never trust the clown. So what do you do? Prevention, Marlene, prevention. You steal his custard pies. <laughs> but not always, though. There are some countries where you shouldn't steal his pies. Anybody? Saudi Arabia, eh? 